Hi everybody, gather around. It's story time. Are you considering jumping from Windows to the Mac? Or have you done so recently? Well, my name is Mike and I can help ease that transition by using me as the example. Okay, I'm gonna date myself, but I started using Windows back in the mid 90s and I was totally in. I really enjoyed the graphic user interface I got to know the ins and outs of all of the different settings, all of it. In fact, it helped me land my first job out of college because I was one of the few nerds out there who spent that much time learning the ins and outs of Windows. And over the years, I tinkered with tons of desktop setups, tons of hardware configurations, and I really learned the ins and outs of setting up drivers and all of that stuff to get Windows just to run as smoothly as I possibly could. And my pastime was just optimizing the system so that it would just run perfectly all the time. Then over the years, life marched on, and I ended up with a family and uh, several users in the house. And suddenly I became the director of IT Family Services. This is not an easy job because now, instead of just my one system, I have two or three others that I'm also responsible for. Because when something stops working, they tap me on the shoulder and really expect me to fix everything for them. That's not fun. I got to deal with everything from network glitches to driver corruption to registry issues, uh, strange settings deep in the advanced properties tabs became my friends and it just became overwhelming. I would spend at least at least a handful of hours every month just troubleshooting, not working, not having fun, troubleshooting. So after literally years of this, I decided there's got to be something better. There just has to be. So I started looking at my trusty iPhone. Well, maybe not this one, because I think my first iPhone was the iPhone 3GS. Again, I'm dating myself. Now, what I found appealing about Apple was that they control both the hardware and the software. They integrate almost seamlessly. And because Apple controls which devices or components, I should say, fit inside all of their hardware, their laptops, tablets, their phones, all of that. They control each component. Therefore, they write their operating systems to support those components. It's very efficient. They don't have to write a set of drivers that can support anything being made in Korea, Vietnam, China, Canada, United States, Russia. They don't have to do that. And that's important when you want to save those handful of hours every month. When you first start looking into Apple products, people are going to start to warn you about the Apple tax. And it's true that there's not an inexpensive Apple product per se, but when you compare apples to apples, see what I did there? And oranges to oranges, Apple isn't actually that expensive. That leads me to the story about my first Mac purchase. I was looking for a travel laptop and I wanted it to be lightweight and relatively powerful. So I started comparing the MacBook Air against several Windows-based laptops with the same specs. And I kept finding, to my surprise, that all the Windows laptops were more expensive than the MacBook Air. I took a trip down to the nearby Apple store, took a look at the MacBook Air, and decided to take the plunge. 
and I absolutely did not ever regret it. After that, my transition to Max was fairly gradual. Over the next few years, I ended up getting a, a MacBook Pro, kind of an old one, and I made that my desktop. Um, then I jumped to an Intel-based Mac Mini. After that, I purchased a desktop Mac that I currently use, which is an M1-based Mac Studio. That thing is now several years old, and it's still a beast. It has no problem running anything. Over that same period, we invested in a couple of iMacs for my wife, including the M1-based iMac that she uses today and loves, and I spent almost no time ever troubleshooting anything with it. So life after switching? Well, my troubleshooting hours have dropped off a cliff. Application and operating system updates don't break things anymore. At least most of the time. So I've actually got more time for work and play. The computer becomes a tool again. It allows me to get things done rather than fixing the tool. So an analogy would be if a mechanic has a screwdriver that doesn't work, then she or he is not going to spend five hours fixing the screwdriver. They're going to throw it away and then get a tool that works. And if you are all in on the Apple ecosystem, the integration of the services, the first party apps, the um, synchronization across all of the different services, apps, operating systems, um, airdrop, uh, you know, handoff continuity. Uh, these are wonderful tools that allow you to get a lot of things done with very little effort. Okay, so when you're coming from the wide, wide world of Windows, you're going to have to get used to the much more narrow world of the Mac when it comes to software, especially around niche utilities that are just uh, everywhere in Windows. Um, you're not going to find that they exist in the same quantity in the world of Mac. Also, the Mac App Store is very much like the iOS App Store in it's a walled garden. The stuff that is available there is generally trustworthy to install on any of your devices, but they have to meet Apple's exacting standards. And very often there are subscription and purchase costs involved. However, you can still download applications from the web from almost anywhere and get them to work on your Mac without any problems. And a few other benefits after switching to Mac, you're going to have really good battery life, quiet operation, many, many fewer viruses and malware issues. And quite honestly, Apple products hold their value really well over time. So what is your conversion story from Windows to Mac? Drop them down in the comments and let everybody know. If there's some reason that's keeping you from converting to the Mac, share your concerns down in the comments below and we'll all talk about it. So that'll about do it for this video. I hope it helped a little bit in your journey from Windows to Mac and will reduce your anxiety just a little bit. So until next time, have fun, stay safe, and keep learning.